Yes, welcome everyone. Cannabis News. I'm here with Joe Claire. It's May 27th, 2019. It is a new week here at the Marijuana Times. Marijuanatimes.org is where you can find us. Click that video tab there to find the show. A bunch of great articles and more from a lot of great writer, uh, writers, all at marijuanatimes.org. Today, we're talking about New Jersey and trying people and uh, lawmakers in New Jersey trying to move forward with marijuana law reform after the failure of adult use legalization getting through the legislature. Also, has legal cannabis killed the bong? And after that, Dr. Sanjay Gupta is back talking about medical marijuana. All of that is coming up. First, of course, Cannabis News is brought to you by NatureSide, nature-side.com, and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Make sure you're growing safe and poison-free and not putting harmful chemicals on what you are growing. Accomplish all of these things. Be regulatory compliant. Don't use banned pesticides. Check out NatureSide, nature-side.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News. They're awesome. Go and check them as the kids say, this first story by Julia Granowitz and MarijuanaTimes.org. New Jersey lawmakers move forward with decriminalization and medical marijuana expansion. Excuse me. We've talked a lot about New Jersey over the last several weeks and well, the last year and a half, really, when it comes to the slow march to what ended up not being adult use legalization through the legislature. The earlier plans to fully legalize cannabis in the state of New Jersey have now been pushed back, Julia writes. The state is still working to reform their policies surrounding the plant. Numerous bills have been passed in committees in the last few days with full votes expected before the week is over. Uh, Issues covered include decriminalization of cannabis possession, expanding the state's medical marijuana program, and expediting the expungement process for past cannabis convictions. Democratic State Senator Sandra Cunningham said in a statement, quote, Expanding the eligibility for expungement will allow more individuals to remove that stigma and break down those barriers, preventing them from reaching their full potential. Um, Obviously, with the failure of full adult use legalization, there are lawmakers now falling back and getting what they can get while the getting is good, as the saying goes. Disappointing, obviously, when we heard a lot, starting with Governor Phil Murphy's campaign a couple years ago about legalizing adult use marijuana in New Jersey, and that looks like that's going to be delayed several years. They sent it to a referendum to voters, and the voters approve it. They have to go back to lawmakers. It is a very long process. Uh, there was a piece of legislation passed by the Assembly Appropriations Committee would uh, uh, advance the issue of decriminalization. It would make possession of two ounces or less of cannabis a civil infraction, so instead of jail time, it would be punishable by a $50 fine Progress, if they can get something done, they are in New Jersey, but not what we were sold, so to speak, uh, just a year and a half ago. So it shows you how quickly things can change and how um, inevitability is not always inevitability. This next story from TheGuardian.com. Has legal cannabis killed the bong? The basic premise of the story is that with all the different vaporization and, and health uh, health worries and the legal cannabis having a, an effect on the supply of edibles, increasing the supply of edibles, bongs are maybe falling by the wayside. Maybe they're a collector's item. Maybe, you know, in any case, less and less people are going to use them if more and more people have different choices. Um, but they also point out in the article that bongs are still a huge business. Uh, Harrison Baum, CEO of Daily High Club, an online head shop that sends monthly a monthly box of smoking accessories to subscribers, said bongs were a niche, but a very big niche, popular with uh, young people and nostalgists in their 50s and 60s reliving their college days. In four years, Baum said the company has sold more than 300,000 bongs. Now, if that number can be believed, that's from you know one website from a monthly subscription service. That's a lot of bongs. I mean, obviously, not all of them being used, but, and obviously, when you think about, you see it on Instagram and Facebook and, and, and Twitter and different places, the artistry that goes in the glass making now and how elaborate it is and just, it's incredible. I mean, just for that alone, that will keep bongs in use. There's always going to be a group of people, much like there's a group of people who use, you know, still use vinyl records or whatever. It's, it's kind of comparable. There's always going to be, as his, he said, a niche market 
for bongs. And especially when it comes to the, the artistry and, and, and things like that, it's just people, a lot of people are going to buy them. Maybe less people will buy them. Obviously, there's more choices, so that's going to hamper you know, the demand for them. But in any case, I don't think that's going to be something that's going to go by the wayside. I don't think in 20 years we're going to be talking about bongs as you know, a relic like 8-tracks. It's more like vinyl and less like 8-tracks if you're looking for a comparison. I think that's a pretty good one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to offend any 8-track people out there. You know, if you're, if you're sitting there with your 8-tracks like, hey, hey, buddy, watch it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will I'll retract my statement. I'll back off. If you're an 8-track lover, good for you. And there's going to be a lot of bong lovers. As I said, a lot of pieces out there are just, I mean, the artistry that goes into a lot of this glass making is absolutely incredible. Last but not least, Dr. Sanjay Gupta talked recently with Dr. Oz about medical marijuana. Because apparently that's his thing now. He's like the Dr. Medical Marijuana. With the opioid crisis continuing to worsen, it's important to investigate anything, I mean anything that could help, including something that continues to cause controversy, medical marijuana. You all have strong feelings about medical marijuana? Right? A, a lot of folks seem to have an opinion on this. Silence. <laughs> you have strong feelings about medical marijuana? I think most people would just say, yeah, legalize it. That's it. That's their, their strong feelings. I didn't hear any uproar in the audience. Now, not all the same opinion. Dr. Sanjay Gupta is once again putting weed under the microscope with his groundbreaking reporting. And he's asking the question, could pot be the solution, the solution to America's opioid epidemic? Sanjay, you're a busy guy. You could do any project you wanted to on the planet. Yet this is your fourth special on medical marijuana. Why do you keep coming back to it? Well, uh, Oz, I, I think it's really important. I think this is one of those, um, one of these substances out there that for whatever reason has uh, been demonized. Mm -hmm. And I think it can be a real medicine. I, I didn't believe in it earlier on in my career. And I've come to the conclusion that for certain conditions, not only can it work, it's the only thing that works. Mm -hmm. So it, it became almost as much a moral issue for me as a medical issue. We have to talk about this. We have to beat the drum because I don't think other people really are. I hope that someone like you, someone like me, can actually keep educating people about this. So what is the strongest evidence you found? Because whenever I have this argument, and I've had quite a few, people say, ah, what? That's right. there's nothing much out there. What's the strongest evidence that could actually help with the opioid epidemic? That maybe it's not a gateway to opiates, it might be the gate way out of opiate addiction. There's three important points, and let me make them quickly because they're important. Number one, we know, and there's plenty of evidence that cannabis can treat pain. Yeah. Okay, the, the National Academy of Science has a consensus on this. That's not in debate anymore. It can treat pain. It can even treat pain differently than opioids do. They both block pain signals to the brain. Mm -hmm. Cannabis also decreases inflammation, which is why it can work fast. Number two, is it can stop the withdrawal that people have when they're trying to stop opioids. The thing is that people, they wanna quit. It's, you start to quit and you get the terrible headaches, the worsening pain, the nausea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. You know what it's like? It's like patients who are undergoing chemotherapy, who are cancer patients, mm -hmm. and cannabis for a long time has used, been used to treat that. It can be used to treat these withdrawal as well. But here's the most compelling thing for me, was that when you take opioids, within a few days, your brain changes. That's what they call the brain disease. Your brain has changed, and you are no longer able to, to really have the same judgment, the same decision-making, the same ability to quit. You can't just say no anymore. It's, it's, it's egregious to ask people to just say no if their brain has changed in this way. Cannabis, is specifically a component known as CBD, can help heal the brain. So treat the pain, treat the withdrawal, heal the brain. If you had to design something, Oz, to get us out of this opioid epidemic, mm -hmm. It would probably look very much like cannabis, and it needs to be studied. So here's the thing: one, the, the and I had it took me a minute to square this, but I'll give you my best my best attempt. The weed documentary he's talking about, Doctor, I was talking about, and apparently where this clip is from is from last year. It's from August of last year when Weed Four came out, opioids versus pills. We talked about it at the time, uh, so I went and looked looked back up to see if my make sure my memory was was correct in this. But this video is published on Dr. Oz's YouTube channel on May 26th. So yesterday it was posted, which is why I'm playing it now to his 777,000 subscribers, because it brings up, you know, the issue again, obviously. Anytime someone like Dr. Sanjay Gupta or Dr. Oz or, or someone like that, someone more mainstream, I mean, let's face it, I wish everyone was reading the Marijuana Times, uh, but they're not. There are some people who are missing this information 
in whatever way it can get to them, whether it's Sanjay Gupta, who's raised awareness about medical marijuana considerably and CBD considerably over the last six years, and someone like Dr. Oz, older people who will see things like this, they'll maybe look into the issue and will say, well, what, you know, what do we care what they think? Well, they have votes too, and right now we're still in the voting changing policy stage of marijuana legalization, so we need as much awareness as possible. So when it comes down to that, we have as many people as possible saying, look, I believe in this. I've looked into this, whether I start, I heard about it first with Dr. Sanjay Gupta or Dr. Oz or wherever. I've looked into this. I support it. I'm going to tell my lawmaker about it or I'm going to you know, vote yes for this initiative at the ballot box or whatever it is. Uh, I'm not sure why Dr. Oz decided to post this, which apparently happened last year, yesterday on his YouTube channel. But, you know, for whatever reason, it it, it re-ups the awareness that it brings. And uh, hopefully, you know, things like that continue moving forward. All that is continue moving forward. We continue moving forward here at Cannabis News. I want to thank NatureSide, nature-side.com, and their organic all-natural pesticides for sponsoring the show. Excuse me. I want to thank all of you for liking and commenting and sharing the videos, watching, spreading the truth about cannabis with this show. That's awesome. I hope you continue to do so. We certainly appreciate it as we march even closer to episode 420, which is coming soon. It'll be awesome. How awesome or why it'll be awesome, I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. i got to do something to make it awesome. Uh, I'll figure it out, hopefully. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening today <laughs> to this episode. We'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. <laughs>